You can feel free to take a seat. Well, we are continuing um, in our summer series, The Church at Large, where this summer we ask a whole bunch of different people to come and share something that has been on their heart, something that God has been teaching them, or something that they just really love talking about, and it has been great so far these last couple of weeks. And we are continuing this week um, with another friend. Esther Chassie is here with us, and so I'm going to read her bio for you as she comes up but you are in for a real treat this morning. Esther is a graduate from Word, sometimes words are hard, Word of the World College, which is now called Encounter Church in Denver, Colorado. She and her husband, Fungai, are senior pastors at the Center of Worship in Zimbabwe. Esther is also the founder and CEO of Global Aid Missions, a charitable organization registered both in Zimbabwe and the US which provides ministerial interventions for people living with the, with the albinism condition on different levels. She speaks on different platforms, on social and women's issues. She's been married for 26 years and has four children. Please welcome Esther with me. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody, in Jesus' name. It's good to be here back here in Denver, Colorado, and I bring you greetings from Zimbabwe in Africa. Now, in my country, when we greet people, we have to bring big smiles, okay? So can you just give the, your neighbor a big smile and say, welcome to church? A big one. <laughs> big one. It's good to be here. Um, thank you so much for giving me time to come and speak to you. As you have heard, my name is Esther Chassi. I'm the founder of Global Aid Missions. And I start, as I start my presentation, let me honor the pastor, um, the leadership of the church, Pastor Nathan in absentia. He's a lovely man. I met him and we connected so much. And I do have friends here, Devin and Gabby. They also introduced me to pastor. So I'm happy to be back here. And it feels like home. I was with you a couple of weeks ago, I think a week or two here. And I really, really felt welcome. So thank you for having me back to share with you this morning. I'll get into my uh, presentation first of Global Aid Missions with the helpers that I have this morning. As you have heard, my name is Esther Chassi. I'll show off my family first. I love to show off my family. There we are. We are so multicolored, as you can see. So I'm married to Fungai. This is our 26th year in marriage. And uh, our four beautiful children, Amanda, Tyrone, Tinashe, and Talia. As you can see, if you may allow me just for the sake of this presentation, I'll use colors, okay? So we would call ourselves black and white, and we love it when we introduce ourselves. So my older two look like me, and the other ones uh, have the albinism condition, okay? And I'll explain more as I get into my presentation and also tie it with the message here. So... Um, as we go with our presentation this morning, I am a graduate, as mentioned, of uh, Word to the World College. I used to reside here in Col uh, Denver, Colorado. I did my ministerial training under Marilyn Hickey Ministries, and then I went back home to, on the missions. I'm a missionary officially to preach the Word of God. So when I went home, um, I wasn't satisfied by just preaching the Word. I felt there was more to it. So... I wanted to touch more lives. And therefore, with the help of my husband, I used to say to him, his name is Fungi. I said, Fungi, I need to touch people more. What is it that I can do? I would preach, I would be on television, I would do the whole works. But I wanted to touch people more. And he says, Essie, what, what is it that you really want to do? I said, I don't know, but I feel I need to do more for Christ. So we started by feeding people on the streets of Harare in Zimbabwe. Uh, he was my first volunteer. I have to mention him. He was my volunteer. He says, okay, I will drive you. And we prepared our meal. We had the simplest of all meals. Uh, we had rice. And I just had uh, gravy, no meat, nothing, because we didn't have money then. And some mixed vegetables. We did not have plates or cutlery to give people. And he says, I said, don't go during the morning or afternoon. Go at night. That's when they have resided. They are sleeping on the street. They've, they're not looking for anything else. That's the best time to touch people. So he drove me. It was now in 2006. He drove me into the streets of Harare, and we started feeding people on the street. And that day marked a beginning of what I'm going to be talked about. Because people would come to me, young people, 
older people, they'll say, Mama, Mama, they, just for me to give them food. And I realized it's easy to touch uh, the lives for Christ. We don't have to think outside the box. You just have to be who you are and be available. So then we founded uh, Global Aid Missions, which is the organization that has been running for the past 16 years, since 2007, and we by feeding people on the streets. Okay? So our mission is Global Aid Missions. This comes from this scripture. John 10.10, 10, the second part, Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So as you can see on the screen, the second half part, John 10.10, 10, reaching out to people with albinism. How did I get to reach out to people with albinism, you may ask? I didn't know that as in ministry, as you are led by the Lord, I loved when we were praying about us being led by the Lord. As you are led by the Lord, he orders your steps from one step to the other. So I would be praying, we would be praying with Fungai because we are both pastors. How how then do we touch people? And we started, as I told you, giving people, uh, feeding people on the street. From there, we graduated to medical supplies and equipment because our country was in dire need of medical supplies and equipment. People were dying in the hospitals just because they didn't have the basic necessities that a hospital would have. And I remembered in Denver, Colorado here, would have people coming doing presentations from Project Cure and you name it, donating free medical supplies. Why would somebody die because they couldn't uh, uh, get an IV in the clinic. So I said, you know, why don't we bring in medical supplies? So we graduated from feeding people to the streets to now bringing in medical supplies and equipment for needy hospitals. So we are now working with the government of Zimbabwe to bring in medical supplies, you name it, anything medical we bring into the, uh, uh, into the country. So now, how we got to albinism? Now I have two children who look like me, uh, Amanda and Tyrone. We continue to work. Now, in 2009, something significant happened. Let me tell you something. When you begin to walk with Christ, he takes you from step to step. Remember that scripture? He takes us from glory to glory. So that's exactly what was happening with us. As we were giving out medical supplies and equipment, we received a huge shipment in 2009 full of medical supplies, but there were lots of boxes of sunscreen lotions. I didn't know why we had sunscreen lotions and we didn't have a need, so we just tucked them in the veranda and continued with the other medical supplies. Then I, be, I, I was blessed. I was expecting a third child. When I was expecting a third child, God showed me in a dream. He gave me a name of that child, a son. I didn't see his, he his head. He was wearing a woolen hat, but I got the name Emmanuel, God with us. In my language, it's Tinashe. And I wrote it down. I said, this is different. I wrote it down. I also met some other older ladies that in a prayer meeting, they said, you're carrying a special child. I said, oh, okay. You know, like a mother, thank you, thank you. Every child is special. Little did I know that that child would come with the albinism condition. And one day as I was driving along the streets of Harare, I stopped by a traffic light. And this guy came with a huge umbrella because it's sunny where I come from. It's quite hot. He had albinism. He knocked on the window. Mama, mama, can I please have some money? I said, sorry. I rolled down my window. I don't have money. But what do you need it for? I was just striking a conversation. He says, I need sunscreen lotions. Then I realized I've got boxes of sunscreen lotions. Why don't we start giving out sunscreen lotions? So we then pioneered this program of the albinism condition to fulfill the same scripture. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So we started outreach projects where we reach out to the community, people with living with the albinism condition. We can move to the next slide if possible. Why albinism, you may ask. Where I come from in Africa, if you have seen documentaries or issues uh, coming out, um, let me explain it like this. When a person with my color, like I said, excuse me for today, I will use black, okay, and then produces a white baby, if you don't understand how that condition comes about, everything, you know, with human nature, if you don't understand something, you tend to kind of like mystify, you know, that's our nature. So that's the problem we've had in Africa. So when people or children with albinism are born, they tend to face a lot of discrimination, segregation, you name it, because people don't understand how albinism comes about. So how does a child uh, with albinism come into life? It's a genetic condition, a recessive gene that chooses to show itself maybe after five, six generations. So you may 
think you are not carrying the recessive gene, but you may have it. After six, five, six generations, it shows up. So the recessive gene has got to be present within the father and the mother for a child to be born with albinism. So it's not the mother's fault. So the myth, the myth that we deal with that you can find uh, a husband may divorce the wife. Oh, you are the one who brought me a different color child. That is not my child. No, they don't understand how albinism comes about. So generationally, uh, people have been killed, murdered, those that are albinos in our midst because people don't understand. So there are so many cases that, uh, that uh, children with albinism would not even be sent to school because they think this is something you know out of the ordinary they are not real people you know there are cases where somebody would come and just try and touch the skin to see if they are real people and uh, so many myths around you know albinism we've had a, a lot of uh, rape cases where men living with hiv would rape or sleep with a woman with albinism because they believe it cures hiv so we are dealing with all kinds of things so you may ask why albinism this is the core so we realize that when god blessed us with our children and he said to us, you are carrying a special child. We were carrying, or we are carrying, a special call for these people. So as believers, as pastors, then we come with the love of Christ to embrace people or uh, children living with the albinism condition. So we do a lot of ministry on television teaching because people have got to be taught, right? So we've got to bring the message that no, a child is a child. Whether it's a child with albinism, who cares? Okay, because life comes from Christ. That's why I said John 10.10 10 is where we base from. Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So those are the interventions. I can tell you there are about 70,000 on average people with albinism in Zimbabwe. So we do a multifaceted um, outreach for people with albinism. I don't know if you have the next slide for me. Um, where we are now with the project albinism. So we've got four pillars that we really run with. Thank you. So we've got really four pillars that we run with under our, uh, our albinism project. We've got the education because a child with albinism naturally comes short-sighted. Okay, they don't have the melanin that you and I have to protect them from the sun's uh, rays. So, hence they are prone to skin cancer issues and also on their eyes, the retina has no color, there's no protection. So when they go into the sun, the eyes are runny because they are trying to protect themselves uh, from, from the sun and they have to have sunscreen lotion at all times to protect their skin. So naturally they come short-sighted and when they then go into school, if a teacher does not understand why they are the way they are, you know, they may make them sit at, at the back of the class and they can't see what the teacher is writing on the board. The grades will not be good and they will say, ah, this child is dumb or, you know, and no, naturally they have high IQ, but it's because they can't see. So this is where we come in with the love of Christ and teach the teachers that no, a person with albinism, this is the way they are supposed to be taught, okay? So, where are we with the project? Right now, we've established a clinic in Zimbabwe, in Harare, from the outreach projects, because people would come, whenever we would come, uh, gather like this within the communities and preach the love of Christ. They would come to us, you know, with different problems. I'm just a pastor, I'm not even a medical doctor, I'm not neither a nurse. So they would come, I've got this happening, my gums are like this, what do I do? And we didn't know what to do, so we started reaching out to doctors within the community to come and give address, to address, you know, on our platforms before we preach. Please come and tell our people what this is and stuff like that. Then we realized that because the need was growing, we had to establish our own clinic. We had no money, but we are faith people, right? So we started believing for our own clinic and speaking to people, we need a clinic. We need a clinic. So my, one of my brother-in-laws came to me and says, Esther, what is it that we really want to do? I said, I need a clinic because people are coming with so many, you know, skin issues, people with albinism. I don't know how to address. She says, okay, I'll speak to a, a doctor friend of mine. Um, as time had it, then some doctors offer their clinic. Uh, one doctor, actually, his name is... Um, uh, yeah, thank you. He, one doctor then offered his clinic for our services. So we started our services 
uh, on Saturdays, one day a week. He says, Esther, from this day forward, these Saturdays are your clinic. Bring your people, we'll treat them for free. So that was the birth of the albinism clinic in Zimbabwe. But it was a good, we celebrated, good intervention, good project, but it also posed a bigger problem. What if somebody gets sick on Monday to Friday? Where do they go? So we started believing God again and uh, for our own clinic. And I'm glad to say in 2018, we launched our own albinism clinic, the first one in Zimbabwe, and which is actually the first in Africa we then realized. Uh, we are offering uh, general consultancy. We've got doctors on place uh, that come to see our people. We've got nurses available. What do we do? We give them counseling based on the word of God because we believe that Christ is the center of life. So we do the, give them counseling based on the love of Christ. We give them sunscreen lotions. We've got donations that come from here, Denver, medical supplies for the clinic, you name it, protective clothing, you know, and so many books to read, and just the love. We've got people that come to visit from here as well, just to love on them and tell them about the love of Christ. Why have I uh, given my testimony this morning? I've given uh, my testimony because I have seen the journey where we have walked. Where we are now with the project right now, with the clinic we are running, we've been renting the premises for the past three years. But we have grown to another level where we need to establish and buy our own building. And I shared this with Pastor Nathan, and he gave me permission to share with the church that now we've grown because the project is bigger. We've got people coming from all across Zimbabwe to this center, and we're still renting. And we know economically after COVID, you know, companies are not doing well. So God has given us this scripture in Isaiah 66, which says that, can I bring to a point of birth and not cause delivery? He has brought us these 16 years to this point. So now we are believing for this beautiful building. Uh, it costs about $400,000 to buy for the clinic so that we have got an actual center that we really refurbish in Zimbabwe. So I'm also appealing to you guys, if you feel led, to partner with us in that project. That's our greatest need that I've shared with you this morning. And why have I shared global aid? What is it that is on my heart? Just like uh, Maggie said that I'm here to share something that has touched my heart. And I'm hoping today I may also touch your heart. Romans 8, 14 says, for those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. I have been doing what I'm doing because I felt led by the spirit of God. God is spirit. And the Bible says they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You are here because his spirit drew you to be here. Otherwise, you would be somewhere else. But his spirit is calling on your spirit to something that he is. He wants you, you know, he wants you to manifest in your life. Those that are led by the Spirit are the children of God. So we are all children of God. You are not like me, right? And you are not like the next person sitting to you. Each person has a call. So God has breathed upon each one of us so that we can fulfill our divine mandate. I didn't know when I was in Bible college that I would be doing albinism either. I never had it even on my, on my agenda at all. But by following the action of the Spirit step by step, here I am now. I'm talking about clinics for people with the albinism condition. So I'm here to say that the same with you. God speaks to you through the Spirit. I like it when Pastor Nathan was uh, speaking about looking up to God and looking into us so that we can touch the community, right? We can only do that when we listen to the Spirit of God. If God wanted you to be in heaven by now, you would be gone. Okay, so we didn't get saved so that we can just populate heaven. We got saved so that we can be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. I like it because we prayed it before the service. We are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. So each one of us in our different capacities, we need to introspect and say, Father, what is it that you really want me to do? For me, it just took me to understand the cause of people with albinism, the plight of people with albinism, to have my own children in the house. I see them every day, and when I see them, they're good enough motivation, I can tell you, for me to go on television and say, don't kill these people. They are just like Christ. They are, you know, because I have them, God has put them within my life. So what am I trying to say today? That God is spirit and he speaks to us in spirit and in truth. Those that are led by the Lord, by the spirit of God, are the children of God. Just like John 10, 10 says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. So you are God's child. You know Christ, 
you must then be in a position to hear what God is saying to you. And not only to hear what he's saying to you, to follow his footsteps without fear. The Bible says he has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, of love, and of son. I didn't know I could speak in front of people like I'm doing today. But now here I am because he has not given me the spirit of fear. And what am I talking about? Albinism, the call of my life. So the question that I'm trying to pose to you this day is, what is it that God is speaking to you today? What is he saying to you? We are all called to manifest the presence of God. One of my scriptures that I also love is Romans 8, 19. For creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. In another version, it says a creation is anxiously waiting. You know when you're anxious, anxiously waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. You are sons and daughters of God. And guess what? Creation is waiting for your manifestation in your field. That's why I'm saying, what is God saying to you? to you. This is passionate as you can say. I'm passionate about what God says. What is God saying to you in the secret place when you're by yourself? What is he saying to you? What is he saying you must do? Who are the people that you must touch? And, and guess what? Creation is waiting for you, for your manifestation. So today, I will be praying for you today that the Lord will give you the boldness to move in the steps that you are supposed to make, to, 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 to do in this life, because that's why you're still here, okay? <laughs> in conclusion, I will quote Pastor Nathan's words when I came here. He says, the work of the Spirit is drawing us to participate, not to be backbenchers, but to what? To participate for the sake of the kingdom. We are kingdom citizens, ladies and gentlemen. We are called, we are royal priesthood, right? We love that. Called by God, a peculiar people, a people chosen by God to do what? To manifest his glory, to manifest the love of Christ unto all the nations. So I'm here to give you this same scripture, that we are all united by the love of Christ. That's why we're going to be having communion. Jesus died for us to have life that we may also give life to others. His blood was shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of all our sins. And by his blood, we are united in Christ. And we are united for what purpose? To, to bring the kingdom to the lost, to touch lives, to transform people. So I'm here today. And I'm hoping that I've spoken to somebody I don't know what God has been saying to you in your life over the years or when in your devotional time. I don't know what he is saying to you. But I'm here just to endorse and say, you know what? The time is now. You need to arise in faith because you are a child of God. You've got the spirit of the most high God inside you. You are there to touch life and to touch lives and to transform lives. Can I pray with you today? If we may bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning. Thank you, Father, for your children, Father, that are listening to my voice. I believe I'm not here by accident, but I'm here by divine appointment. That, Lord, you may speak to each one to answer their call. They call to transform lives, to transform nations. Father, I thank you that, Lord, they are not filled with fear. But, Father, by the mighty spirit of God, they will be led and they will move to touch lives for the glory of God. Lord, I thank you today in the name of Jesus for everything and that you are going to do through them, my Father. I pray those that need divine helpers, raise divine helpers for them. Show them the way, Father, of how to do your work. I give you glory, uh, glory, Holy Spirit, this morning. I give you honor for the work that you have done for us today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.